I'm Bruce Blake here with a quick message for all you listeners of the Rolled Standard. They just wanted to give a huge shout out to Feedspot for selecting them for the top 100 RPG podcasts you must follow in 2021. If you want to see them move up the list, rate and review them on iTunes or wherever you listen to the Rolled Standard. You know what? Maybe I'll sniff some glue with you too. standard i am christopher and i was your game master as we played numenera which today we're going to review and of course i am joined by levi i played faroon Umbra's here or J- or jake <laughs> that's that's also my name and i'm nate and i played Kalein. right so first off numenera is a game released by monty cook games uh, i think so yep yep that's correct sounds right could remember the last word um, <laughs> crisco monty, monty crisco <laughs> yes <laughs> Yep, that's exactly right. <laughs> no, uh, and um, it's part of the Cypher system. It uses that engine, uh, which was very foreign to us. Yeah, very, very new. Very uh, <laughs> Everything's new to me. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, just look at that first game we played. Okay. I, Woof. I, Woof. Woof. Okay. No, no, no. The, the first I agree. two sessions were almost death for everything. Yes, you are <laughs> Yeah, ah, no, the real. second session, Umbrus didn't get touched once, and yeah, he helped slay the big, okay. big baddie. Well, almost death for Klain. Yeah, almost every say. session was death <laughs> almost for Almost yeah. every session. I was like coming to terms with my death just about every time I had to roll something. Yeah, and you were so calm about it, too. <laughs> look, I, if I'm going to die here, at least let me it's die. like, look at his legs. They're snapped in half. <laughs> <laughs> They're bent all in crazy directions, oh, like nice. a fucking licorice well, piece. Yeah. Well, this is quite <laughs> unfortunate, yes. Um, <laughs> no, uh, that first session, halfway through it, I'm like, man, this is rough. going to be impossible to use. We did like, discuss, I don't know how to fucking do this. We, we did discuss on the break that we might have, might to, have redo to rehash it. the first session. Right, but then once we hit the last half of it and everything was just like otherworldly unlucky. Like there was yeah. no way, uh, statistically it should not have happened that way. Like, we should have at least rolled. Do you like, blame the big dice? Do you blame the big dice? Oh, man, for sure. That oh, thing's my waited. God. If, if you guys Good don't thing. know, we played that first session with the biggest dice we had. It was a giant countdown die, and it was just the like... The size of a billiard ball. Yeah, absolutely. It, and the bigger. weight of a billiard ball. It made me laugh so hard because Levi's like, we got to use this one since we're only using D20s. Yeah, and yeah. then you oh start God. using it and it's just no. like one, one, three, the four. <laughs> just fucked us so bad. Um, the story about it too is funny because when I bought it, as soon as uh, the cashier handed it over to me, Levi's like, all right, let me roll it. And he just drops it on the floor. First roll of its life, a natural 20. And I'm like, this is going to be good luck. So when he grabbed it, <laughs> I was like, sure, let's do oh, it. Man. And it nearly murdered us fucking so quickly. It, it made it such a fun episode, though. I like halfway through, I didn't feel like, oh, fuck, I don't know what we're going to do, of course. But then I was like, man, this is so fun. I, I, I enjoyed every moment of it. Well, once we it learned done. the mechanics, finally. Oh, of course. Like just being the characters, too, especially, though. But. Um, learning the game, like that first episode, I, it, it's so it's kind of raw man. because of the fact that I think it's important to recognize how we were learning in those moments too. And it, if I recall, I'm pretty sure we played that wrong, didn't we, Chris? How so? Like, oh, we were we were those, um, those beasts were like too powerful, and the whole edge system, right? The edge system, I, I know we were doing. Oh, wrong. we were doing right, that right. wrong, and we played the beast wrong because they. God, I can't remember. They had like some sort of armor, right? So I can't remember. I can't either, but Honestly. I know that they were something all that was just... All I know is just... it was All I remember terrible. is a lot of screaming. <laughs> I remember at the end of that episode, we were just screaming. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't remember why, but... Because... <laughs> I think it's because the combat was just so devastating. Yeah, oh, my oh, God. Gosh. Because we were outside. You and I were outside talking, and yep. you're like, hey, I got a question for you. Do, you. do you think the group would be comfortable with another creature being thrown at you? I mean, you're doing pretty good so far. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I don't see why not. We haven't been hit yet. We're fucking destroying this bear. We're good. 
D- don't ever ask me for advice again. <laughs> fair, all enough, right? fair enough. Okay. <laughs> it was a combination of you asking me that and me being like, oh, yeah. I mean, I've never played this game or really any other role playing tabletop right, games. So we have to fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a. Uh... It did go well. It was fine. Yeah. The more, fact is, anytime you walk away from it, you did fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think as Kim long Lane as you walk... was, he was drug out of there yeah. with a fucking <laughs> no, he ran away. away stretcher. He ran oh, away. I he did ran run away. away. The the crab. I was, he, I was, he was stretched speaking out. figuratively. Yeah, I was stretched out. Stretched out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound yeah, right. Yeah, the, the okay. second big combat, he was definitely so jumping into the out. jumping yeah. into the cipher ci- uh, jumping into the cipher system for the first time. Yeah, uh, like uh, what was it like running all that kind of stuff? Because it's like just I'm, green code falling down. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like it would be. Um, it was relatively easy. I mean, I ran the vortex. Um, module from the starter set, which right. was our original plan was to play that. But as we as we got into it, and this is kind of like a, a, a seg, but I'll get back to it. Mm. Um, as we as we got into the game, I ended up buying the D- Destiny Discovery slipcase set, and uh, was just like, let's just use these real rules. So we literally started playing the starter set, and then which is first edition starter set or or pre Discovery, whatever you want to right. call it. And we ended up morphing that story into modern rules. Which is fine. Um, I think it was just that's just what we did, and uh, I think it was the game was better for it. Oh man! Well, because within the starter set, there's no, there's nothing about advancement. Like you wanted to level up or do anything like that, you just couldn't. It just wasn't a, wasn't an option because it doesn't mention it. Oh wow! Um, we incorporated that from there. We also, uh, I, we did the armor system. We were doing it wrong, I think, both ways. <laughs> but either way, we just ignored it. Not me. <clears throat> well, you weren't wearing armor, so I think that actually technically is true then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew the yeah. whole time. I thought you guys knew what you were doing. No, I did. <laughs> Mine was quietly being done because I I, I I just have it marked here anyway. But um, It was fine. Yeah, no, I, mean, the... I forgot I had armor. Yeah, that's common. See, I didn't, uh, but <laughs> I really, had, I had two armor the whole time. There were, to- yeah, there were so many times where, oh, oh, I see what you're talking about, like armor being. It has uh, a cost. Cost, yeah. yeah we I didn't see do what it at saying. all. Right, that part. Yeah. Well, that's because it would be way too much for us to figure out. Oh man. Well, but- first off, the the the, uh, the stars I didn't even mention it, and when we started using discovery, it's just something I never came across uh, because I didn't read it cover to cover. I just was reading it as I felt I needed it. Well, w- oh, but uh, to answer the question. Mm. It was a relatively easy game to run. Um, it pretty much came down to just following the story beats, um, which was kind of freeform and kind of a weird story. So it was, a, I had to make up a lot of things. Um, the travel to the, the travel to the second spot where you ran into the um, whatever you want to call it. I can't remember what we called the, it. The, the, called, the narthex is what it called it. Um, the 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 building itself. Oh, that's it cool. called the narthex. What? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was just mostly following the story beats, but I had I had to make that up. Easy game to run though overall. I would say. The hardest part, and it's not even hard, is figuring out um, the difficulty of, of roles when people are asking to do that things. That makes sense. And yeah. it's it's not really that hard though with the with the with the chart that that, that they base it off of. You know, just the, the the descriptions they give of those things are so give accurate you... that like you can kind of judge based on that. And it's it's relatively easy. And a lot of those numbers are do end up being kind of low. I notice a lot of three through fives. Uh-huh. And that's not, you know, that's just what a nine through fifteen. That's that's you uh, but that makes sense. Some knots over there, Levi. Oh, think about fishing. <laughs> a oh yeah, yeah. Let's not talk. About well, no, that. that makes sense too. <laughs> because those, the rolls themselves were bad there, not the DC. Right. <laughs> but no, the easy game to run. You know, it's just a little crazy. There's a lot of ad libbing to have to do for the kind of narration that we do. Yeah, oh, um, God, but I had to add a lot, and that's fine. And it was fun, and it so all good. worked. Oh man. It, that, but, that's how that's how we get into the stuff about like uh, sitting on the wall and like yeah. uh, moon cabbage in general. Yeah, right. mo- all the moon cabbage stuff is uh, so fucking fun. And I'm gonna then, I'm gonna tell you right now though, for me, mm-hmm. uh, the mechanics for Numenera was so much easier for me to follow once I got the hang of it yeah. and keep track of versus uh, running with Five uh, E. Yep. Oh, for sure, absolutely. So it's a very it's, simple system. Yes. When we, if you go, if you listen to the the first few episodes, and you're like, "Fuck, this game sounds way too much." It's because we are fools. Yes, we are <laughs> fools. <laughs> it's like Chris you're generally knows. <laughs> Chris generally knows what's going on, and we're just like. And Chris, uh, Chris may be the biggest fan of us, 
but he also likes to watch us flounder. So <laughs> that's what I'm a if, fan of. If we if we stumble into a situation that he did not set up, but he can he can make it bad for us, he will. He won't kill us outright unless we do that. But yeah, I love I, that. yeah, I rarely kill anybody in, in well, all the years of role playing. You yeah. came pretty close with I, this game. I always get real close. Yeah, and man, I, yeah. edge, I, I, I you're, death edge. You're an you. edger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you like to edge. I get it. Edgy to death. <laughs> That not not terrible. quite stabbing, just just touching him with the edge. Just oh laid. yeah, yeah, just yeah. scraping some skin off. He's, tan Ooh, he's tantric with our lives, is what he okay. is. <laughs> sure, uh, sure. No, that the first time one of those bear things hit me and was like eight damage or whatever, I was just no. like, eight oh fuck, yep, yeah, this is. I'm dead. There's no chance because I'm just dropping might on everything that I'm doing just to yeah. make sure. And then as soon as like I have to subtract all of it away <laughs> just because I get hit once, I'm like, no, this game, what is happening? Yeah, the pool system was really unique. That was very strange. I also feel like it's just one of those things that, like you were talking about seeing a lot of roles between three and five and like... DCs anyway. D yeah, right. Yeah. I think that those things are all obvious things that change. Well, like, we pretty much stayed... Levels are weird. Uh, advancements are not... It, or advancements rather are weird. They're not like traditional levels in in most other things and whatever. But I feel like once you get through a bunch more advancements, all of those things, those DCs are going to you'll see a lot more the pools, crazy DCs for things. The, is what I'm thinking. The pools, yes. in my opinion, made sense because it I felt agree. it felt way more grounded to be level one and being like, fuck, if I go up against this thing, I know that I'm gonna waste my strength. Yes. Yep. Like, as as Umbris, I knew that I could not physically get involved at this point in the game because I was just a feeble, middle-aged man who just wanted to drink some grill cleaner, right? <laughs> Hang out with his weird but lizard that's why, dog. But that's why I stayed afar, and this is, for me, along with the, how all the mechanics work, I fucking love... The little Numenera items that we get. What oh, the hell? Yeah. The, the, the fucking, ciphers. The Literally, ciphers. Yeah. That is what won us the battle <laughs> so many times. That's the, the point ciphers. of ciphers. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Oh, but man. that's what subtracts from your pool. Like, I didn't have to worry about that because I collected a few ciphers and I understood my character after yeah. that massacre in the beginning. And I was like, all right. So when we fought that crab monster, mm -hmm. I wasn't actually too worried up until like uh, both of Kalane's <laughs> legs were gone. Yeah. <laughs> They're just strewn across the beachfront, <laughs> and Umbris is flying up above, and he's up there. He's like, "Well, fuck, I might have to actually touch this thing." <laughs> just so happened we fucked him up enough for me to just land on him, and the cipher worked. That was very sweet. Yep, that was very cool. And then we devised a plan. So it, it all stayed narratively, too. That yeah. was the best part about this game. Well, that's like that's what happened at the end, too, was most of our escape plan and everything, once we came down to it, revolved around the idea of, like, Because man, we know we're weak little boys, right, and we can't right. take on a bunch of fucking cultists. Right, exactly. And, like, we don't know what the hell was actually going on in there and everything, but really all it was was, like, let's get this boy out of here. Yeah. Like, we stuck to that part of the narrative of the story, like, helping this kid... And then it turned into this amazing moment where we convinced this dude <laughs> to, oh, fucking, that to, was to do the vortex. Chris, Who can you? Again? Chris, you told us this after everything, and of yep. course, it, uh, uh, <laughs> we all know about it now. But because of the fact that we didn't follow the story uh, the way that we uh, the the story kind of uh, expects you to, right. not necessarily wants, but expects you to. Um, can you tell us what was going down with all of those weird fucking things? Because Comparatively now, it is so fucking funny to me to know that there's like an inc a completely different fucking story that could have been happening. Okay. So uh, if you're intending on playing this, this is going to be a spoiler. Yeah. Um. So, to, um, you know, just don't pay attention. Yeah, this or whatever. is the, 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 the end game spoiler for this. Yeah. Stuff, so. so ultimately, that, that, that vortex was um, a portal to a sun, a star. Um, and it was powering that structure itself, that building. These people have no idea of that because much like most of the things in Numenera, it's just all a mystery. It's right. all, we don't know what. Oh, it, it was a mystery for sure. <laughs> we um, couldn't figure that but shit out. To if save you were our to lives. touch it, you would have uh, disintegrated. Hundred points. It's literally a hundred points of. Did damage. you hear that, Faroon? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I really wanted a hundred. You uh, say hundred? One hundred <laughs> even points of damage, which would just vaporize you. Fuck me! The, yeah, I am so glad. Which I didn't which touch it. which makes me laugh even harder. It's like at leaving how... a hot dog on a grill for like three hours. Well, like <laughs> worse. 
But, but like, but all that into one millisecond. All that. The best part of that is like, before we knew all this stuff, we literally convince a man <laughs> to, yeah. to, touch it. to have this emotional goodbye. I, I wanted yeah. to see what would happen if oh. someone touched it with my own eyes. Uh, you wouldn't have. We would have seen it and then not known what happened. No, no, no. no. Uh, he got what he wanted. But if, he, if, but if no one else was going to do it, Convin- Levi was going to do it. I might have touched it. <laughs> Levi's yeah. like, fuck it, I'll Just touch it. I was ready for it. Oh, man. Oh, I, I gotta God. play my character. I could man. not understand your thought process behind that because the dude said, like, they just disappear. And they don't <laughs> come back. And everyone's like, I'm gonna touch it. I kinda <laughs> wanna touch it. You never know where you go. Yeah, well, exactly. however, you know, it could have been a, a different spot in this temple. No, no that's, true. Uh, that's true. That's uh, true. It is a, it is a the, the closet. The broom um, closet. Yeah, <laughs> that nobody's ever Skeletons gotten out of the, in the, room. the closet. Well, the way closet. Chris described it is this it's this big labyrinth. Yeah, right, more or less, more or less. So, like, who knows how big this labyrinth is, and it could have just teleported them to a different part. No, of the you're labyrinth. absolutely and that's right. That's why I was it's thinking possible. in the back of my head. I mean, hey, if you're at the same time, I'm if like, you're pe- if you're playing a character that's like like ridiculously curious like that, then it makes sense. I just Kalane is definitely not that guy, you know. Well, Faroon explores dark places. That, yeah. That's the that's the <laughs> that opposite is, of I dark know. places. Every night, I know but... that's the brightest place in the world. <laughs> Every <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty you good. horrible bastard! But um, no, uh, that guy whose name I don't remember, the big, which, the boss. Oh, the, uh, D- Danny DeFato. Right, that one. <laughs> yeah, the that, that, that dude uh, who I cannot remember his name. But either way, he Nile River. No, no Nile is the dude that died. Yeah, yeah, that's the dude. We oh, hold <laughs> on. I got this. Ri- I got this. Rope Nile down. is the guy that actually Savra, went into it. Savra. No, nope. that's the boy. Uh, that's, the, that's the dude. Man, my notes are everywhere. Barkeep wants, and there's nothing. And then Numenera <laughs> notes, question mark. <laughs> 2 XP up here. His name's Abrasil, okay? Oh, Abrasil, right there. Oh, bad guy. I, also, I got a bad guy next to his name. <laughs> I, I have a Abrasil, too, and underneath it says Big Dog. <laughs> all right. Those oh, are all, all and Shona. Notes. I got Shona Sh- written down. Shona. Oh, my God. That's not his name. Savra yeah. was the old lady. His that's name's just Shom. Shom. <laughs> Savra. That's right. Phyllis. Phyllis. It's all right. coming back to me now. <laughs> yep, that's right. But no, um... A Brassel had a, 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 a cipher on him or a Numenera. I think more of an audience. It was the amulet that let him, it would have let him pass through or whatever. No, he, he had that, like, a, a, like, a, like a force field, like in the shape yeah. of a dome. Oh, yeah, this is the crazy part. And because, it prevents the communication from coming he's a through flat the vortex. Earther. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> well, that's the other thing is there was no moment where we were going to like kill him, I think. It was all like. I expected a, you guys to go in and just murder Hobo everybody. I don't know why I thought that. Well, these, because you that's generally how do. Everyone right, plays. right. Yeah, that's right. Like the standard I way think play, it's that because these disease. characters, like, we just decided that they weren't going to be there. Or they got beat up right away in elementary school <laughs> and could never fight again <laughs> after that. Well, once we walked into town. Everybody was like ridiculously cool there, and um, yeah. they talked about the cultists being weird, but they weren't like hostile or anything. And then uh, w- once once Jake was like, "Man, I thought we were gonna have to come in here and just start killing you guys," and they're like, "Well, yeah, that would have probably been a horrible." <laughs> but but like I get it. You mentioned it even. Well, well, yeah, I did. <laughs> right, because because the- you were like, "Why are you being such an asshole?" And I was like, "Well, fuck! If they're not gonna fucking do anything, I might as well keep pushing the buttons." Well, well, like this is the thing. It makes sense to me that they weren't in a world where their most like valuable object is a thing that makes people feel fucking amazing all the time. True. You know. Well, True. we didn't know that right away. We didn't, but but, <laughs> but once it learned. got to that point, that's why it was like so weird when when it's like we're all on edge and he's talking about having to kill people and stuff, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, that would have <laughs> sucked." Yeah. Come with me. Uh, yeah, the back right. Room. And then it's just like, okay, so now we gotta fucking low key figure this kind of shit out. What's going on here? Because I was more so about if a Brassel was gonna get in my shit about uh, Shom, that's when I was gonna fucking pop off on him or whatever. I, but I, uh, I really have no idea why I made him so agreeable, dude. I don't <laughs> know. It just happened. Script, in his script, he's not me really like that. It, I don't know why, but he's really brash well, and arrogant and condescending. He spends so much time around the fucking. Serengeti star from <laughs> what Dragon the Ball. The, the Pleasure Dome. Oh, the Pleasure Dome is pretty much a good name for that place. <laughs> that's what I thought. Just the Welcome dome to the general. Pleasure Dome. Tonight, we have Nile Rivers. <laughs> Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, friend. Oh, no. <laughs> um, no, I... No, regardless of all, like, the cultist stuff that happened and, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a... You said he had a... Um, a Numenera on him that was a cipher, maybe it was I, it, blocking transmission from the star. It wasn't necessarily a cipher because it was um, permanent, kind permanent, of permanent. Yeah. yeah, 
Maybe it was Ar- level Ar- 99. Is it artifact or an oddity? I can't remember. Oh, artifact. Those two things too. Oh, artifact. Yeah. artifact. Oddities are just like bobbles. Goof, goofy things, yeah. Knickknacks. Yeah. So yeah, he had an artifact on him, and that prevented him. Anything metal couldn't pass through him within his dome, which is like 10 feet, I believe. So anyone, you couldn't even got close to him with, with all your things. Yeah. However... Um, that was also blocking a transmission coming through from the vortex yep. from some uh, AI essentially over there that was asking for trying to get help, which then would call out to you guys if you were to kill him, and uh, which didn't happen. And then um, you would have – well, they would have told you to come through, and ultimately what you would have had to do is go find within that structure another room that um, prepares you for the journey across so you survive it. Now, what it says, well, what it says in the scripting is that uh, there's like clothing or something um, along those lines, like some a kind space of like suit type some kind of shit. hazmat suit type. Yeah, space sure, suit works just fine. Uh, but what I was going to have you guys do if that we, if we were going to get that go that direction was you guys find a room that has like almost like a almost like a car wash. Like when you go through an automatic car wash, but it just like sprays this like sealant on you. Oh <laughs> shit! Colorful too. Real, yeah, Rainbow just color. Green. You're all like bright green. It, it, it should actually be a car wash that's just oh, in this man. building, and you get on a little track. The foam somehow makes it okay. Oh um, yeah, the rainbow down for just like gasoline. a for a moment and a half. It felt Futurama. Uh, no, just dude, a dude, it really dude, did. Dude, yeah. where's my car? Zoltec. Zoltan. 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 Sorry. Zoltan. Anyway, I haven't seen that in 20 I did that, years. Did, right. I did that at work yesterday to, to Devin. I'm like, hey, you want to go on your break? And he's like, what's with the Zoltan? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like such a weird universal thing that everybody knows. Even if you haven't seen that movie, everybody knows Zoltan My hands for some reason. did it for no reason. Like, I wasn't in control of that at all. It's just like, hey, you want to go on break? <laughs> it was oh, dumb. my God. Um, but, uh, well, see, like, but yeah, that, so I was, like, I was prepared to run that story. I was prepared to run in any story that we ended up with. Fortunately, you gave me the easy out. For me, anyway. Yeah. It's like, well, this is an abrupt ending. It um, is. Which was good because that's we were trying to we we're trying to get there so that we could just you know, move on. And that actual, Yeah, but I totally... I'm sorry. The actual ending we received, oh. teleporting to the mountaintop, yeah. I was not expecting that because... That's what I was going for. <laughs> they, it worked! Unexpected. It worked. Because yeah. we were only in there for that brief amount of time. And in my head, I was thinking, okay, so we're going to go on this thing, and then we're going to pop back out. Right? And and the girl's going to just be got... like two steps away from where exactly. she was. Exactly. I, exactly. But then when it was different, that's when I was just like, oh, shit, time isn't actually the same when it's in there. Like, it could go faster. It, it could matter. go slower. Yeah. It could. Bo- I, and it's like, dude, that makes to- so much sense to write it that way, though, because you so don't fucking understand. Yes. You can't understand it. It's the that's exactly dimension. what I was going through. Kind of, well, could be. It that's could be what I'm saying. I thought it was fucking that. great. Well, like, that, that, that was my point was like um, the whole point of the game is the sense of wonder and discovery. And it's and I was just like I kind of like anytime that you guys would kind of like make inklings as to what you were expecting or whatever, I would immediately turn it on flip his it. fucking head. Yeah. yeah. Because like that's kind of the point of it. Like for perfect example is Cecilia. <laughs> when you're like when you couldn't tell a gender because of the leg and everything and then you named it Cecilia, I immediately wrote Cecilia equals male. <laughs> 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 like immediately, <laughs> so like this is an example of that. But like the whole point of it just being like everything to be unexpected, or for you not to have any idea what's going on with something, is sort of the point of the game. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, I and came across also... that dog thing. I thought for sure that thing was gonna eat me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm alone in the woods. Well, yeah, and then I read a lot of those things too. Those were a random encounters that I created on a little table. Um, but those all came from discovery. So if we were playing true to the book. Or to to the starter set, we wouldn't have even come across things like that. Right, and all see, of that was bad. Lived. See, that's too. The, the, all those things are way too cool now because Cecilia is just like a great little piece of like kind of a Regina moment that he gets like. Which I did not mean to do, by the way. It's it's the, funny because of the Cecilia fact that you showed are up the character. and the name fucking popped into my head. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> I love that. I almost have never had character or like good character interaction with animals and stuff and like john had uh regina and um umbris had cecilia and faroon had cletus and like the the faroon moments like the oh mm -hmm." (laughs) (laughs) like those were the best dude i died The first time while she's she's tying the harness and the knot, (laughs) while she gets up and the knot just falls loose, and then Cletus takes off in his slow trot, you know, and she just slides off the ass end. Oh man, dude, like that was the first time I was just like, oh, Oh, no, this is is who Faroon is. I get it now. Yeah, oh man, a curious 
Oh, speaking cool. of <laughs> speaking of another great thing for Faroon because none of us had any idea how this was gonna work, but you're the back of the head lump. Oh <laughs> you start. <laughs> oh, I'm threatening people that were looking at it. Oh, <laughs> like what was it? The little boy who is like, hey, you got something on your head, and you're, you're like, about to... I grab his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Man, oh, man, I just, I don't know, man. And so it, many it does good... make sense because in the beginning, he like, well, we probably cut that out where he was like grabbing your leg and he's like squeezing it. Oh, maybe. I don't know if we did or not. I can't, I can't. Actually, I don't know. at this point, you probably haven't even edited that one because it hasn't come up yet. You know no. what? You're fucking right. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like, I think about it because. Because she did that weird thing and we were both like, no, I the... squeezed your shoulder. I no, no, no were, it was the leg. My leg. You were like, my broken leg. Oh, your broken leg. You were like, Faroon grabs on to Kaylane's leg and she squeezes. Oh, masochist. Yeah. yeah. I was just like, <laughs> this is the most out of. The... Why are you so mean to me right now? <laughs> this is... Did you have a Bondy moment too where you switched weapons? Yeah, it was just <laughs> after <laughs> that. <laughs> it was just after that. So that's why I was just like, why? No. Yeah. <laughs> You're so inconsistent. No, we, we, <laughs> and then and then she buys we, everyone rounds. No, we swapped weapons after that. No, no, no. That was you were carrying me back because I had my legs busted and I told you I couldn't get up towards the ant like the the crab to fight it. So I was just like, take this, give me your crossbow. And that's when you're like, be careful, it was my father's. And then when you were car- in the next episode, you're carrying me back and you're just like, Faroon squeezes his legs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill him. <laughs> Scratch my crossbow. <laughs> Can we talk about that single fight though? Oh, I, I wanna what the the heads. Yep. What was going on with the heads? It, Were they that, supposed to be a siren call? No, that's kind of. Or what did I that was thing feeling. just kill people and then spike them and then have the heads? Like, it, is it, that just it, a fun thing that this thing does? It's it's it eats. That's what it eats. What's in the head? It's oh, like, so it's like little straws. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Right, That's cool. It, I, I thought it was kind of like a siren thing, too, where people nope. would hear like vague, almost voices and shit. Probably. And it, it works very similar. Probably, probably yeah, dual action. It's just creepy. <laughs> dual action. Yeah. Instead of seeing some hot babes down in that water, you see some fucking heads floating around going blah, blah, blah. More or less, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much what they were doing. <laughs> Like they made the each other's names occasionally because it was the two brothers. I think there. one of my favorite things, uh, uh, one of my other favorite things, is um, just oh, casually forgetting about the bag that we picked up very early. On. <laughs> yeah, I had to because, constantly remind you because of, of the madness that happened in that episode afterwards. Once we once we got back into town, the episode later and stuff, it was just like, wait a minute. We have leads. <laughs> we we're talking to a, a motherfucker about cabbage and a giant crab <laughs> thing or whatever the fuck. And Farun, uh, <laughs> Farun had it the whole time. Yep. yep. And then tried to hide it and then stumbled across it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... they still didn't get upset. Hey, we man. talked our way out of that hey, one. Hey, man. That's, that's, sometimes that's what it is, man. They're ready to drink the Kool Aid and shit. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. Were, well, some of them were ready. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> your, your. Nile was ready. <laughs> Nile was definitely ready. Yeah. And, uh, Umbris's weird 67 year old love interest was it also. It wasn't a ready. love interest. <laughs> well, <laughs> I uh, could see how from the outside, man, you have fucked up minds. Was, no, not even. It's like, oh man, Umbris has really got some mommy In my head canon. He? He's got grandma issues. In my, <laughs> in my head canon, she resembled his mother. Okay. That made it creepier yeah, to me. Creepier. Hey, boy, that's. Make, that actually checks out, though. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that why that happens? That's, yes. that's actually yes. some uh, of my favorite moments. He is a sociopath. Like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so do you guys have any regrets about playing the game? Like anything that you wish you did? Fuck no, dude. This was a badass game. I, I had so much fun. I Umbris, have one. You Umbris have... might, might overtake John right now as my favorite fucking character. Oh, Good. man. It must it must be nice to to be able to think of like actual things to I've say. I've only to played people. three, so <laughs> well, I mean, thinking about it, because I can imagine the way that you played John was just like, okay, I have to wipe my mind of any actual yeah, information. Yeah, as go. John, I just react. To Whereas things. literally, Umbris oh, wow. from the very beginning, Umbris was. The I'm here dude for that... a grilled cheese, honestly. I'm just looking for a grilled cheese. <laughs> no, no, we're not a John and a James. We're a James and a John with Regina. So, so you'll have can't to be the same me. people. Can't be the same people. Come on, follow oh, me. Man. I'll get you that milk, uh, dude. <laughs> Like, Umbris was a dude that was pushed in the forefront to you, be the leader. Yeah, so you, f- you, you I, did I didn't want to be it anymore. No, you know? it made sense, but I didn't realize that until we were in the middle of shit. Right, and I was absolutely. like, oh, 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 and then it says right on my my character sheet leads. Yeah, 
So well, then, it was more so it about like I wanted mm-hmm. you guys to be able to. I wanted you guys to kind of like because uh, when it comes to the story and the backgrounds of these characters, I don't know how exactly uh, deep we got into it, but yeah, I was a criminal. Right. And I was a bounty that they decided was worth more to be helpful and whatever. And, and, you were and in my, my bounty. Yes. And in my brain, I thought that it was probably like very recent where it was just like, we need oh, your yeah. help with this thing. No, that thing makes sense. We just, we just picked you up and exactly. whatever. So I figured I was just immediately a little head bit. head into the wilderness for months. Yeah. And I'm just like, I figured that I would just be kind of like brooding and. Uh, and dude, they all started eating moon cabbage well, together. Right, eventually right. it was like, yeah, whatever. Dude, whatever that's, that's actually kind of the moment. We like when we got when we got into town and, and we started talking about moon cabbage, that's when uh, I, there were actually things that were said between Umbris and uh, Kalein that were like, Holy shit! I don't know if I, I don't know if I can handle starting to like you. Or oh what, yeah, or weird no, things yeah. like that. No, I felt the same way being as Umbrus. I was kind of like, man, this is weird. Like I'm developing this relationship with a convict. Well, right, and I never talked about what I decided my crime was going to be either. That's true. Uh, to get put you, in you perspective, said you escaped prison. I did. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I did I escape suppose. prison, but, but when we I don't know why you were in. Uh, well, prison. the reason I wanted Colleen to have gone to prison was for. What did you a... find? Did I miss something else? No, no. I was just I'm sorry. Gonna uh, just let everybody know out there that if you're following along with this, like you're familiar with the product. So the names Colleen and uh, Faroon are familiar. Um, oh, oh Umbris Blake, however, is not. Oh, Umbris because isn't. Um, yes, I did Jake change just, my name. You just reskinned uh, Sherrod Talar as Umbris Blake. That's the only yeah. thing that you just changed his name because you had a good name in mind. And that yeah. worked out fine. And that's totally um, cool. Um, but yeah, as a disclaimer, that's Umbris equals charade. Yeah. Uh, so these are he all... He is a charade, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, we used a lot of the actual backstory stuff or almost all of the backstory stuff much. and whatever. Um, but the way that I ended up starting to play Kalein was not a bad guy. So... What I guess I decided I was going to do, obviously it never came up in the story or whatever, but if it ever had where somebody had asked me about my past or something, I I, I assumed really that I would go with something like uh, I he, he my, killed he killed I married a, my cousin. No, he killed a law officer that like he killed a law officer that was like corrupt or something like that. And it was like. I don't know something something like that. I like a uh, or like uh, in a in a a bar uh, fight protecting his lady's honor. Uh, killed, yeah, killed. Well, no, no. I always thought that he would just like uh, killed a man in self defense or whatever, and went had gone to prison for it or whatever. And whatever, it he had his it chance. Didn't matter. Yeah, he, he had his chance to leave, and he did. Regardless, what it I was just is figured that, he got picked up with moon cabbage on him. <laughs> Could have been that. Crossing I didn't. The I just didn't want him to be a criminal. Criminal, you know, because he ends up being like a driving force for. Um, saving Shome. Right. And I didn't feel like if he was like an actual shitty dude would that he wouldn't up. care. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have yeah. given a fuck. So care. I figured that it was more of, uh, I don't know, like a innocent man kind of because, crime. Like even Umbris has like this anti-hero kind of feel to him. Oh, for because sure. Because he's, he's kind of a dick, but he's also a good guy ultimately because he is doing the right thing. Right. Which... He's just doing it kind of as, as an asshole. Yeah, he's, he's chaotic good. <laughs> In a way, he is. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. What about Faroon, though? Because we didn't get to delve into your backstory. You didn't even really become a fleshed-out character until Cletus showed up. The, oh, and, boy. And that makes yeah. sense because Levi is relatively, comparatively new to uh, role-playing. Yeah, not only role-playing, but... No, uh, but I just want to understand because we didn't get to dive into no, absolutely. Faroon's background no, well, very uh, much I guess, in game. I guess a good start then would be whatever. We're, we're pals, but Umbra's completely fucking space that out for like <laughs> yeah. three days straight. <laughs> I had said it for like <laughs> like 15 minutes. I was like, aren't you guys like childhood friends? <laughs> yeah. Umbra's is like, no, I don't know this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but no, actually, that's a good point. And we could start with uh, your your one regret for Faroon. Yep. Oh, uh, all right. So. Faroon has an oddity, all right? Is it the boil? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Because no. we knew about okay, that. So she has oddities, two oddities then. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, oddities are strange objects of the prior world that have no direct combat application sure. or other obvious use. And I picked it out session one, what I wanted it to be. And I had, like, all these scenarios when I'd use it. And I never freaking used it. Oh, fuck. What because was it? Because hers is an unknown musical instrument that plays soft unpleasant sounds (laughs) (laughs) oh man that would have been so good too why though well i 
I don't know. It was is it, just, is in, it in just... my head, I, I pictured a kalimba, you know, like those yeah. little metal oh, piano yeah. things. Dude, it would have been a perfect time for you to be doing I it. I thought it was we just like Nickelback half... playing over and over again on a, like, a little MP3 player. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is actually even more useless. It's uh, a crystal that shatters easily, but then instantly reforms. That's awesome. I feel like that one. Did you use that I one? think so. I thought of it as like a, like a stress relief type of thing where it's just like cocksucker and smash it on the table and then it like a stress ball or something. That's mine cool. mine was literally uh, just a constant camera view of the moon, a close up. Interesting. Is it yep. really? It's a glass plate that shows what seems to be a live image of the moon, but from a closer vantage. Sometimes the moon has a green band and other times it doesn't. What the fuck? What? That's yep. so weird. That's, that's so weird. That's bizarre. bizarre. That is so, so every, strange. Every so time, he's just got every, like an iPhone that yeah. has like the, the, the some satellite feed app. You know what? That you probably, can't, that's probably what it is. It. No, it's probably an iPhone that you can't unlock <laughs> and it just shows because the green would be the unlock symbol. Oh, That's maybe. probably a fucking iPhone that he can't unlock. It is now anyway. Oh my god! And it's just an animated wallpaper. He's like, check us out, dude. Yeah, it's like, hey, <laughs> hey, want to see a picture of the fucking moon? Want to see what's going on in the moon right now? Uh, isn't that <laughs> it's wild? Not, it's it's not a, a, wall. a live wallpaper. Who uh, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know that though? Oh my god, that, dude! I I used almost all of the ciphers that I picked up though. I think I used every. No, that's another I regret. Didn't, I, or did you actually Were you hoarding me? ciphers? I did didn't you, use the ciphers as much as I wanted to. Did you commit me to pouring that uh, liquid on that grass? I don't remember. You did. I think yes. you did. You did, you did. But it just so, didn't happen. <laughs> because it takes time. Oh, yeah. No, because I remember it, that now. Grow, grown in size in 10 minutes. Yeah. So I, I like I in, in combat, even... I dumped it down thinking it was going to get in front of this creature. And he's just like, ha ha, fucker, I'll see ya. That's not good. <laughs> Somewhere out there, there's just a giant blade of grass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, there was a part while we were playing this. Actually, where was a reflection of the of the session. I realized that we were playing this correctly. It was when you guys were obsessed with the grill cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> no, because the game is about finding like relics of the past that you don't know what it does, but it's like the coolest thing in the world to you. And you guys were all about this bottle of bleach. Because <laughs> you didn't know what it was, but you guys are totally into what it did. <laughs> so well, I'm like, this is exactly what Numenera is. Well, it was the fucking bartender. It's a bottle of bleach in the future. Because <laughs> we I, have this epic adventure to go on, and we're so obsessed with this bleach. Well, yeah, the bartender <laughs> offered me a drink, and I, I'm just going to turn down a free drink, and it turned out. Sure. To just kick him on his ass. <laughs> oh, to tell you what it actually was, it wasn't bleach. It was block whitener. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, what? It's, it's what you use for like cutting, cleaning like those um those like plastic uh, cutting boards in kitchens. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> it's like it's kind of like a gel, but it's like bleach based. But it's, it's, you're oh, supposed geez. to like scrub it on. Anyway, it's, it's and, it's, and it foams up. It was it was block whitener. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I that, loved that shit. Oh, dude, and then you giving him, <laughs> you giving it to those dudes, and then like throwing you, up, and then oh, nothing we, else happening. Yeah. <laughs> I thought for sure. I thought for sure <laughs> they bought it. It's they, just the same as the grass, man. Yeah. I fucking I poured that grow liquid. I mean. He, he, he Another does testament. not understand how liquids work. <laughs> he just doesn't understand chemistry. It's also just another testament to the Numenera concept in general. Absolutely. Where you guys are like, this is going to happen with yeah, this Yeah, trial thing. by and fire. And then it's like, yeah. it just kind of doesn't work because you don't quite get it. Right. Like, that's exactly that. Honestly, all of these moments were, were actually perfect examples of that. So yeah. That, yeah. Oh, my God. All of us just throwing up in that tiny fucking hut. The, I, I think I that that's like... hey, I think that that's the most important thing to take away from any of this right now. Yeah. Is that think about Numenera as that when you play it. It's about the Numenera. Yeah. It's about those weird little things and how you use them and your obsession with them and your fun with them. It's about discovery. It's about discovery. And learning how to tie knots. To fucking oh, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think what you did there. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you don't even see it. I didn't even see it. My eyes are closed. Now uh, they... No, but uh, I really feel like, or at least I hope, that Monty Cook would hear this Chris and be like, yep, I mean, you guys are kind of idiots, but ultimately that's what I was going for. Oh, I, I love I love the idea that like creating ciphers or Numenera or whatever, you could create whatever the fuck you wanted in any wipe capacity. And <laughs> wipe out. A perfect example. It's a perfect example. I think that it's so open. Like it's it's so Getting perfectly on the shoes open. Or mayonnaise. Like think about it this way. 
When we reviewed Fate Core, we talked about its openness being an issue for the for how we were trying to like portray whatever story we yeah. were talking about. Its broad horizons uh, made it kind of hard to dial in on what we wanted to do. I yeah. think that was but, our fault. Well, it might it might have actually been our fault Could too, and that's fine. But we are getting better at this too now. Then that's, because yeah, of the fact that. Obviously, there's kind there's a there's a narrative to kind of follow through all this stuff. But when you have a world that exists where they literally tell you this is so foreign to you that anything could be possible, pretty much yeah. like that sounds infinitely more open. And it's done in such a great way that every time we got a little piece of that unknown world, it was wondrous and and great and like we like just swapping cards of of numenera like oh maybe this one would be great for you and blah blah yeah. blah and the, it, it's like it finding items in dungeons and dragons or any other like tradi more traditional like uh adventure role-playing game or, or tabletop game like you're always excited to find a flame tongue dagger or some shit like that but you have a pretty limited capacity to the things that you can do sometimes because of the rules of the world that it, that exist in those games where this one is just like you just fl you can fly straight up in the air you can't move horizontally unless oh, you push against you. I don't something mind if I do. or like uh here i got one right here that i never used i had it sitting here uh actually read read some of those ones that you guys wait got. what are we reading numenera's or your ciphers oh i already know them well, I, I have my magic aladdin sash it was just a magic <laughs> oh, yeah. carpet wrapped around my waist, I like and it. then uh, my mask that didn't do much for me. And it was then, was uh, it a cut cut out mask of like Batman or yeah, something? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my Batman oh. mask. <laughs> yeah, he's so proud. <laughs> like this one is uh... <laughs> it's my Batman mask. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a little bit of John snuck out there. Yeah, it always does. I went. There's a little well, John inside the real Jake, I think. Uh, yeah. Every once in a while, I mean, it pops out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're not wrong. I have a water breather that's literally just a liquid that allows you to breathe uh, oxygen underwater for five hours per cipher level. Um, and that and that was like, okay, of course, that's like pretty much a potion of water breathing type of Very much thing. So. Did you have any ciphers that you didn't use? Uh, other than that ring I got from... Oh, Plane. the badass ring. Oh, the liquid, the liquid, the liquid ring. ring. That's another sick-ass... You know, and I could have handed out more ciphers. Um, but honestly, I feel no, like I handed them out in the places that there exactly. was the opportunity yeah, to do it. Yeah, because if we had too many, it would just be... It, well, also, there is a cap to how many you can have. Three, I three. think. Yeah, because like yep. that many things together That's can why a I can only effect. have yeah, two I, at a time. But your viewer, your x-ray viewer thing, like coming up with the flavor for that was so fucking funny to mm -hmm. me, too. Those are the other reasons why I think, uh, yeah, Monty Cook would think we're idiots, but it's like at the same time, man... Did they really turn that weird dog toy into a fucking? Yeah. <laughs> a well, fucking I think he would appreciate that. Though. An electric field generator. Yeah, yeah. Those are the. I love the idea that so many of them are from our era anyway, or like well, that's modified how, visuals that's what of it. Would do. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You have to have. Some so I'm not going to come up with something that like like on, on like, exists in the sixth world. Right. I don't know what that is. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I could make something up. I'm sure, but like. You know, it's not going to be as good as, like, the dog toy. Right, you, exactly. So you can't come up with something that in your mind is, a, like, in the sixth world, it's a near fourth dimensional piece of equipment with, like, a tesseract space in it and shit. And it's carpeted. <laughs> so, Levi, you asked what our biggest regrets were. I obviously did not have any. <laughs> Umbris was a badass. He, he very much was. <laughs> um, what was. What was the best part about being Faroon for you, then, in Numenera? Cletus. Was it really Cletus? Yeah, I, uh, I freaking love Cletus. As soon as Cletus man. showed up, you were just <laughs> all about it, huh? Cletus. Now you know how I was with Regina. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, I, followed, I followed that little dog into that cow field for a reason. It was I, out of love. Of course, of course. I loved being... Uh, I, I loved being so stoic for so long, and then as soon as pretty much as like as ninth world, yeah, as soon as ninth world pot was involved, I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, man, look, this is fucking great. Let's go!" And I'll be up, I'll be up on the wall. He's just fucking come get me when you need me. <laughs> I'll go last, but I wanted to ask you, as as the game master, what was what was the best part about? Numenera for you, running the show and watching us fumble through all this. Uh, the best part was probably, the best part was how easy it was to kind of come up with a role to give you. You know, I thought. And the story, the world itself is very cool. I really yeah. enjoyed that weird future, that weird medieval future kind of mm -hmm. thing. It kind of has feels to it. Yeah. I like that a lot. That um, kind of like almost Horizon Zero Dawn type of. Yeah, sort of. of. And then 
like how easy it was for you guys to just be like, I'm gonna do this. I'm like, okay, give me a speed roll of uh, like four, four for twelve. That I like our verbiage for that. You know, like the way that like I don't know. I I doubt that every other Numenera table is calling it like we call it. Like when I'm telling you, like when you're telling me what you want to do, and I'm like, give me this four for twelve. Just the way that I worded that every time. Yeah, we always knew what it meant. Yeah, yeah but except like, for that I, one time I didn't. It felt <laughs> no, that felt right for me. I was no, like, it oh, does... it felt it felt like it was native to the game, so I didn't even think anything yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you said it, I knew exactly what you meant, and I yeah. was like, and "Now that you say it, yeah, you can't really, you can't even say, even just saying that is something that you can't do in another game." No, it was just it was very it just felt right yeah, it for felt Numenera. Yeah, it did, and it was, it was easy to yeah. It was just it was a fun, yeah. Once once we figured fun. that out as players, I mean, we could we didn't slow down much when it came to subtracting and and uh, yeah. doing all the p edges and shit for the pool. Yeah. Like doing all yeah, doing all the mechanical stuff, very simple and I Once we fucking figured it right, out. Right, once once right. you figured hey, it, it was the same thing for for um Fate and Monster of the Week too. Monster of the Week there was that turning point where yeah, I realized e I was for me. It wrong. Well, we were yeah. all just like, "Oh, we get this now." And everything yeah. and everything just clicked and Numenera happened uh <laughs> um Earlier than Monster of the Week, but well, that's that's one of the things that I like about what we do here too, is that even as listeners, you get to hear us learn it. Yes, and you may even realize out there as you're listening to it, like you realize the point where we are like, well, they're playing a lot better now. Like they're right. clearly getting yeah, it. Yeah, right. and our cohesion's getting a lot better <laughs> well, all yeah. around. I mean, so I think... eventually, we're just going to sound like we know what we're doing from the get go. Hopefully, <laughs> I'd like to think so. I'd like to also think that we never will. Because no, every time that, that we switch to a new happen. game, it's like, it's, well, this is very different again. Yep. Yes. Because, like, um, I mean, eventually we'll dig into the old Palladium games. Mm. And those well, before are like we jump into that. Monstrous, <laughs> but that's, that's so long from now, I though, that we may never happen. I right, would like to but. give out my, my best my oh, yes, best good do boy it, time. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was being in charge, actually. When I finally realized that I was in charge, <laughs> it was, it was, it felt more impactful for every decision that I had to make. Because even when I would falter and kind of be like, hey, what do you guys think? You were both like, fuck you, figure it out. <laughs> kind like, of. That's the one thing I struggle with is trying to push the campaign push the narrative. in the direction. Oh, well, I fucking, once I felt so I, I had the reins. You I, know, I'll fucking take the reins every let's time. Let's go! I, that, it was so I much fun. <laughs> well, I, no, I will gladly do that again. Well, here's the thing. I I, I understand how, it, how easy it is for me to default into a leader role because of the fact that I feel like even in our home games before we ever played on this stuff, uh, I... I was the one who was most interested in what the story that Chris wanted to tell us, and for one. And secondly, n never did I want to disrespect the story that he was like fucking like painstakingly writing for us every oh, week. Just weaving a tapestry Absol every freaking time. Absolutely. And 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 I and I always wanted to be there. So like when when you're two years into a game oh. and and everybody's just kind of fucking off, I'm the one who's like. Let's get this back on track and shit. And true. it also makes sense when Jake hasn't played a lot of tabletop games. Levi hasn't played a lot of tabletop games. I listen to a lot, though. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. But <laughs> we all have a really interesting standpoint towards the con towards the topic. We more often than not, like I have a. You and me both are experienced, but we're both we're experienced on both sides, on different sides of the fence. Absolutely. You know, I, 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 I'd almost nothing. Well, the die. The die. Both sides of the die. You're almost. You're actually right. Yeah. Yeah. No, the screen. <laughs> oh yeah, from the other side of the screen. Yeah, yeah, no, because like I'm, I'm always running the game, and I'm totally cool. With it. I prefer it that way. Cause I, I just that's that's the role I like. However, whenever I do play a character, um, you, you I, I, I really, I really there. enjoy it. Yeah. Yes, I think Wagner was a lot of fun. That was oh the only gosh. one I've done so far for this. So hilarious. But I, Nate, you're going to be running Dungeon World after. Yeah. Uh, I don't, actually, which brings up a good. Will point. Will you sit by me? Um, we have our spots. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so that brings up a good point, though, because uh, I know that we've covered what we're, our plan is for the future in previous episodes. Sure. Usually in these reviews. Yeah. Um, and we we kind of gave you guys a roadmap last time. Um, it has changed. Yeah. We are always uh, changing that shit. We do. And it's fine. It's, it's kind of a floating whoa, system. We whoa, whoa. This is not Anthem. We're just getting that out there now. Roadmap oh, is there, but it's not a falsified <laughs> thing. Okay. <laughs> Terrible. Fair we're enough. not EA. Fair enough. Well, maybe sponsor us. <laughs> no! No, 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 we don't want that. No, no, I'm just no. kidding. Can I turn his mic off again? <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, we, um, I saw recently that Evil Hat Productions is putting out two new games. Yep. Um, and they are Apocalypse Keys and Project Perseus. Ooh. Yeah, and I, uh, 
I applied for the play test. I don't know how what the process was. If it was like selective or I doubt it was. I feel like if you just applied for it, they would They're give it to you, and that's you. fine. But we looked like at the two of them, poker. and we decided on Apocalypse Keys. Oh, I'm and so since, soaked. Yeah, and, and since it's um. As a play test, we decided to push it to the front of the line because it's new and whatever. So we will next episode actually, um, I believe. Yes. Yep, yep. Next episode we are jumping into Apocalypse Keys. Yeah. Um, which is looks looks very foreign for me. Um, because of it, it looks like a very emotionally driven game. It's powered by the apocalypse, which is so mechanically to us. mechanically very similar to something that we already know, but also right. uh, in another way, mechanically, so very different. Yeah, and I think the story is going to be more conversational. Yes. I think it will be... I'm going to find me a good cigarette. Hey, yeah. how don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare spoil this boy. Yeah, right. No, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and then after that, uh, then we'll be jumping to Dungeon World where yeah. Nate's going to take the reins. Yes. And I will actually get to be a character, mm -hmm. which is a blast. And then, back to back, since Jake's going to run Lancer after that... Um, I'm a character there too. Yikes! So, yep. so then, hey, and then I'll be back for a good while, because um, again, we're going. We're thinking Merkborg. We're thinking Alien. Then we're thinking Blades in the Dark for a good, good run. Yeah, um, Blades in the Dark is probably going to be a long one. Probably. Yeah, cause... you think Monster of the Week was long? And then we might. Yeah. <laughs> it is summertime, so we might watch Top Gun for about thirty seconds and go out and play volleyball yeah. weekly. <laughs> <laughs> You can't just just don't show me the scene until I'm ready. My arm's not my my arm's not healed up. What happened to your arm? <laughs> I oh. fell longboarding my, my stupid. God. Oh my god. god! That was yeah. I, oh, I heard did. it before I saw it. <laughs> yeah, those are always the best. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll get out there and uh, we'll we'll slap the balls around. We literally mm. won't do that. <laughs> we're not going to do that at all. Aww. I mean, the thing that you said maybe, but we're not playing volleyball. I'll just <laughs> I, I'll just wait till we're all down here one Thursday night and I'll fucking yeah. He's slide gonna whip the table. Zone. <laughs> Look at the screen! Um, <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, um, ultimately, the question is... Uh, the same question we always gotta ask. Yep, did... Yes! Yes, yes. I'm, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring in the rear on this one because <laughs> I have um, a couple... I have, I have like a, a conditional. Sure, okay. So, um, Levi, does Numenera meet the rolled standard? I enjoyed it, yeah. Okay, Jake. <sighs> yeah? <laughs> Can we play it again? That's a, that's a total yes. Uh, and Nate, of course. <laughs> oh, absolutely, fucking Lutely, man. Nice. Uh, I that's, would say that's my boy. Numenera for sure. Definitely. When you reached out like you're gonna grab me, you got scared. You, you cocksucker. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Numenera totally meets the rolled standard for me. I would say though, as a disclaimer, um, don't buy the starter set because it is it's outdated. Essentially, it is it's still for sale. It's out there, and there's nothing to replace it yet. But it is for Numenera before the Des Discovery Destiny books came out. So buy those instead. Buy Discovery. Don't even need Destiny yet. Yeah, that, if you're going to get into this game, just buy Discovery. That that is good. That is actually very very good advice because uh, I I totally agree. I have the starter set as well, and I I like having it for all the pieces and all the things that come with it and everything and whatever. But all the additional content is so. Or, or better yet, all of the standard content now, which <laughs> what it was what it would be, makes the game so much more fun. Just jump in and grab it because it it's fucking so worth it. So much out too. Yeah, it's it... or play because you want to. I don't care. <laughs> but just from if you're yeah yeah if you really really want to get into it if you if you really like the idea of it just just grab the goodnesses, my friends. So ultimately, I feel like we covered the bases on this game. Um, a few things. Uh, Nick if we ever want to give a dog a bone, <laughs> oh jeez! If we ever want to <laughs> wipe out, I I don't know if we say it after every one now, but we will be once we finish a game like this. If you ever like, if you really, really ever want to hear us come back to these characters, especially because a lot of these are left very open ended, uh, intentionally, intentionally for this reason. <laughs> We are very curious to see where these characters might end up, and if we ever get our free time and want to do it then, if nobody else wants to hear it, we'll eventually do it. But please tell us if you want to hear a continuation of any of these stories. We'll find a platform to put them on um, probably outside of the main feed. Like Patreon. Like that. Maybe buy eventually. me a coffee, something. I don't know. Anything, really. But no matter what, we I think we'll always love to continue the story of pretty much any of these characters for anybody's entertainment, man. I yep. just want to see what happens to Huey. Or you want to see a mashup of like 
like he was game gone, and, and, and character yeah, set. He's gone. Like you want to see us play the D pick dudes in a, in a Call of Cthulhu setting? Ooh, we can do that. Ooh, I like that too. Any idea you have? Any anything at all? Yeah. Or Wait. or you have a game that we haven't even heard of, or or a game that we do know about, and you want to see us play it? Let us know. We'll bump it up. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, anything I mean, at all? Just, I can't put John in scary stuff. Oh, that's generally where he goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, and so that's a. Uh, I guess that brings up a good point. If you want to get a hold of us, you can reach us at uh, the Rolled Standard Gang at mm-hmm. gmail.com. If the, you want to go old school, yep. email us. Which is we got we got the, we got some contact on there. Remember, we got a little surprise. Mm, we'll see. We do coming up in the future. We do we did? We did. Oh, we had. We oh, had we talked passed. about this. Yeah. We talked about this. Mm. Yeah, I remember life now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you can easily. So it works. The email works. Just. Yeah, it totally <laughs> works. <Someone laughs> us. Um, yeah, you can email us at theroldstandardgang at gmail.com. Um, you can hit us up at any of our socials. I mean, usually the one that I, I use the most is Instagram. You can hit me up at, at the rolled standard dice on Instagram. I will answer anybody's anything. <laughs> also, we do have the rolled standard on Instagram. Yes, we also, are the rolled standard. You can hit me up personally at cannibal.chris. Uh, just mostly post metal stuff, but you know. If that's what you're into. If that's what you're into, come on by. I just draw things, so probably don't look at mine. Hey, that's interesting too. Shut up. Yeah, and that's at Von House H A U S. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't hide it from us. <laughs> nope, I'm telling everybody. And I, Levi's I, on there too, I, but he I does nothing. I don't Insta the gram. Yeah, he's at Levi Boozy, I believe. Yeah, he is with a Z. Yep. Yep. W. What? No. There's no W in there. <laughs> Could, oh, be. He's, Could he's, be. He's he's making fun of Wagner there. <laughs> give us, Again? give us, give give it to us, Daddy. Oh, um. All right. Well. See you next time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and don't drink block whitener. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Hey guys, Christopher here with a huge thank you to the band Henge for allowing us to use a clip of their song in praise of water as their new theme music. Check out their newest album, Exocosm, which was released in September of 2020. You can find them on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, and pretty much anywhere else you listen to music. Just look for Henge, that's H-E-N-G-E. Thanks again, and don't sniff glue.